Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to Turner Classic Movies, where tonight we are honoring the substantive legacy of James Earl Jones. He died last month at the age of 93. In a prolific career that spanned six decades, Jones worked effectively in essentially every medium, bringing his unique brand of strength and sensitivity to countless performances on stage, on the big screen, and on television. Along the way, James Earl Jones earned two Tony Awards, two Primetime Emmys, a Grammy, and a Golden Globe. And for his lifetime of achievements as an actor, he was also recognized with an honorary Oscar, a Tony, and a SAG Award plus the Kennedy Center Honors and the National Medal of Arts. To millions of moviegoers, Jones will forever be remembered as the voice of Darth Vader and the voice of CNN. Of course, his career in films extended well beyond Star Wars, as we'll see tonight. We begin with James Earl Jones starring in a 1995 adaptation of a novel by Alan Payton, Cry the Beloved Country. Set in South Africa during apartheid, it's the story of two fathers, a black South African minister, played by Jones, and a white landowner, played by Richard Harris. They are brought together through a tragedy involving their sons. This marked the second big screen adaptation of Peyton's novel. An earlier version, produced in 1951, starred Canada Lee with a young Sidney Poitier. Both films were shot on location in South Africa, although by the time of this 1995 adaptation, apartheid had finally been abolished and Nelson Mandela had been elected president. For James Earl Jones, Cry the Beloved Country came three decades into his Hollywood career. He had already given strong performances in films like Dr. Strangelove, his film debut in a small but memorable part. Later came The Man. Claudine, Conan the Barbarian, The Hunt for Red October, Patriot Games, Clear and Present Danger, as well as a couple of seminal baseball films, Field of Dreams and The Sandlot. Before nearly all those movies came his performance in The Great White Hope from 1970, directed by Martin Ritt, which earned Jones an Oscar nomination for Best Actor. But looking back in a 2012 interview, Jones said, if I ever wanted to have something as my legacy in film, Cry the Beloved Country would be at the top of the list so far. Here it is from 1995, directed by Daryl Ruitt, Cry the Beloved Country. James Earl Jones, who died September 9th at the age of 93, was one of the most recognizable actors of all time, especially for his deep, resonant voice. In addition to providing the voice for Darth Vader, he was also the voice behind Mufasa and the Lion King, and he was the signature sound of television news with his delivery of the tagline, this is CNN. But that famous voice did not come naturally for Jones. As a kid, he struggled with a debilitating stutter and a string of traumatic episodes in his childhood led him to shut down completely, not speaking at all for several years. A high school English teacher finally helped him overcome his silence and his stutter by showing interest in the poetry Jones wrote. He encouraged Jones to keep writing and to read his poems out loud to the class. Gradually, Jones found that performing scripted lines helped him find his voice again. Coming up, James Earl Jones returns, delivering another powerful performance in a 1987 drama about a coal miner's strike written and directed by John Sayles. Mate One is next on TCM. Next on TCM, Mate One. Then a silent Sunday with Lon Chaney. And later, The Lure. Something's fishy on TCM tonight. Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us on TCM as we continue with tonight's salute to James Earl Jones, who died in September at the age of 93. Jones left behind a considerable legacy, 60 years of work on the stage, TV, and a course in movies, both important social dramas like our last film, Cry the Beloved Country, and a long list of incredibly popular and profitable films, most notably as the voice of Darth Vader in the Star Wars films. Our salute to Jones continues with a movie he made at the peak of his career, from 1987, written and directed by John Sayles, Mate One. Sales got the idea for the film years earlier as a college student hitchhiking across the United States. 
He wound up traveling through West Virginia where he got rides from local coal miners who told him about a recent violent crime inside their trade union, the United Mine Workers. The reform candidate to lead the union, a man named Joseph Yablonski, had been murdered in his home along with his wife and 25-year-old daughter. They were killed by hitmen working on behalf of his opponent, Tony Boyle, the president of the United Mine Workers. Obviously, that was horrifying news, but the miners said the murders didn't begin to compare to what their grandfathers had endured in 1920 during events that came to be known as the Maitwan Massacre. This film dramatizes those events, inspired by the true story of a West Virginia coal town called Maitwan. A miners' strike there culminated in a bloody battle against the corrupt enforcement agents employed by the coal company. Chris Cooper, a wonderful actor, made his film debut here as a union organizer who comes to town to unite the workers. James Earl Jones plays a supporting role as a character called Few Clothes, a real-life figure who was one of the scabs the company brought in to try to break up the strike. Always working outside of the Hollywood mainstream, writer-director John Sayles didn't think he could land a big star like James Earl Jones for this independent film. We were looking for a James Earl Jones type, Sales said later. Finally, I decided to try for the real James Earl Jones. He said, yeah, and he was just great to work with. Here's the film from 1987, featuring Oscar-nominated cinematography from Haskell Wexler. This is the TCM premiere of Mate One. Mate One writer-director John Sales was surprised that James Earl Jones agreed to play the part of Few Clothes in his low-budget independent film. When the movie was released in 1987, Jones was in the middle of a run on Broadway in August Wilson's Pulitzer Prize-winning drama Fences, a part Denzel Washington played nearly 30 years later in the film adaptation. Washington earned an Oscar nomination. Viola Davis won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, playing his wife. Jones's performance on the stage won him a Tony Award, the second Tony of his career. The first came two decades earlier when he played Jack Jefferson a character based on boxer Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champ in The Great White Hope. Jones reprised the performance on screen in the 1970 film and earned an Oscar nomination. The Great White Hope made James Earl Jones a movie star, but it was not his film debut. That came six years earlier with a small but memorable part as the B-52 bombardier in Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove. By the time he appeared in Matewan, Jones had already played his most famous character, the voice of Darth Vader in the first three Star Wars movies, Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. Coming up, the professor Jacqueline Stewart has Silent Sunday Night. This week, Lon Chaney stars in the 1925 adaptation of The Phantom of the Opera. It is next on Turner Classic Movies. Next on TCM, A Silent Sunday with Lon Chaney, then The Lure, and later Sweetie. Snuggle up to TCM tonight.